Hello everyone and welcome to the game you've all been waiting for. It's Yanni Pomnishi versus Alireza Firuja. It is round four of the FIDE Candidates Tournament and it is uh, quite a spectacular game. Uh, both of them have uh, had a very, very exciting first three rounds of the candidates. Alireza getting three draws, even though it could have gone uh, either way. Uh, first two games were pretty much him uh, de defending uh, tough positions, but uh, in, in game three he was really putting pressure on Hikaru, but Hikaru just found perfect moves and uh, he was able to, uh, to get a draw. Uh, whereas Jan uh, started the turn uh, tournament with a brilliant victory against uh, Ding Liren in round one. If you guys haven't seen it, do check it out. Um, I will put a link to it in the description below. Also a wonderful game. Uh, but let's not spoil too much of what happened in this game uh, because, uh, well, I I every move is... Um, uh, well, ju just to be uh, marveled at. So let's dive straight into it. Jan has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Alireza replies with c5. He goes for the Sicilian defense, as you might have uh, uh, imagined. Knight f3, d6, and d4. Playing the open Sicilian, captures, captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, and a6, going for the knight or variation of the Sicilian defense. Uh, and Nepo goes pawn to f3. This is not a very common uh, common move, so uh, it definitely makes sense to prepare it for, for the candidate's tournament, as it is very solid, and it could contain uh, a lot of poison. So here we have e5, uh, chasing away the knight from an active d4 square, knight b3, and the bishop to e6. So this is all uh, basically the absolute main line, both of them have to know this, they are in the candidates tournament, bishop to e3, bishop to e7, and we have queen to d2. Uh, already uh, saying that it's going to be a wild game as Alireza is most likely castling kingside and Jan very likely castling queenside. That's exactly what happens here. We have castles, castles, and now uh, it is a race. Who will attack faster? Will uh, Jan attack faster on the kingside or will Alireza be able to start pushing those pawns on the queen side? So knight b to d7, Jan starts pushing. We have pawn to g4, pawn to b5, and pawn to g5. We have uh, pawn to b4. Uh, and here, uh, knight back to e2. If you go for trades here, uh, pawn captures on, uh, G, uh, on f6, it's not all that impressive. Uh, for example, b captures on c3, queen captures, and now knight captures on f6. Uh, white can play knight to a5, and uh, that's... Uh, uh, perfectly fine position for both white and black uh, and you can't capture on a2 that's basically the, your biggest issue because if you capture uh, we're just going to play knight to c6 attack the queen and the bishop capture on e7 with check uh, and then play queen a3 to connect with the bishop and the d6 pawn we can even play this out if you guys are interested check queen captures queen a3 now the bishop has to go back and now we pick up the central d6 pawn and after all is said and done for example like this we will have a passed c pawn and this will be very good for white. So of course after knight a5 you can't really do that, you can play something like rook to c8 but still it's not a problem. Knight to c6, same thing will happen, uh, we're gonna move the queen and now knight captures on e7, uh, queen captures and now we're gonna move the queen and you know it's a, it, it's a fine position for both white and black uh, but black has a very 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 active game. If he can execute d5 at some point should be, should be very nice for him. Uh, but okay, uh, knight to e2 is the main line and that's why uh, of course Jan plays it, um, just in case you were wondering, knight back to e8 and now pawn to f4. Now Jan continues pushing on the king side and Alireza continues pushing on the queen side. Pawn to a5, we have pawn to f5 and now usually a4 is played here. This is the main idea and it is by far the strongest move recommended by the engine. Uh, but uh, Alireza prepared something else. Uh, he, he wants to um, uh, create winning chances in every game and he goes for bishop to c4. And it's an incredibly rare move. Uh, it's been played only in a hand full of games and none of them uh, in top level chess so Jan has to be very careful what he does here and interestingly Alireza pretty much played all of the moves up until this point instantly but also Jan played all of the moves up until this point instantly and he replies pretty much instantly here with king to b1. Now the strongest refutation here is knight to g3 and this is considered best uh, but that's uh, only as far as we know. Who knows what kind of engines they are using for the candidates. Maybe Jan has some sort of a supercomputer at his disposal. Uh, you know, uh, we, we unfortunately we never um, uh, get insight into, into those things but uh, you know uh, we can only imagine that. Uh, so here basically bishop captures, rook captures, you're going to play pawn to a4, chase away the knight and knight to a1 and this is now uh, perfectly fine for white. For example, if king uh, takes h8, you can start uh, uh, further pushing with h4, a3, you can play b3, some like rook to c8, and it's a, a very, very tough game to play. White is always better, however, only if you know 
uh, everything. Uh, but after bishop to c4, Nip plays a king to b1. And this is now a much, much different situation than just pushing your pawns when the king is on c1. Because now if a4, the knight ca uh, can also retreat to c1. So okay, this is what Alireza plays. a4, knight to c1, and now pawn to d5. Striking in the center, and we always say if black manages to execute the d5 without ruining his position uh, in the Sicilian, uh, he should be more than okay. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of uh, games, I mean, I think maybe two games that reach this position where e captures on d5 was played, but here Nepo plays f6, and it is now as of move 18 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how Alireza uh, replies to this. He captures the pawn, g captures on f6. Uh, you don't have to do it, but uh, it, it's a pawn sacrifice, so... Uh, you know, if you don't accept it, you're just gonna be worse. So G captures on F6, and now uh, Jan recaptures with the G captures on F6. Again, he doesn't have to do this. He could uh, try to claim some free squares uh, before recapturing, but of course, Black will not capture. Black will just continue development, and uh, at some point, we're gonna have to recapture on F6. For example, Knight captures on F6, Bishop to H6. We're gonna go after the Rook, uh, and now uh, what do you play? King to H8. You have to be ready for Queen to G5. And if queen g5, rook to g8, now queen captures on e5, it's... Um incredibly complicated but also very much playable uh, however we have the instant uh, uh, g captures on f6 we have knight d captures on f6 grabbing the pawn back and now knight to g3 and this is uh, the uh, where the first real thing uh, of the game uh, happened Alireza started thinking here and it took him some 30 mi minutes to come up with a move because he has to uh, you know weigh all the pros, pros and cons or does he just go queen, queen to c7 uh, queen to c7 rook to c8 uh, create some sort of an attack uh, does king to h8 um, uh, is king to h8 mandatory can he afford not to play it or does he just uh, you know go bishop captures on f1 open up the c file right away so there are many options here we, we can show for example if king to h8 uh, we, we go into the force the bishop captures d captures and everything gets traded off so it's not a, a lot of fun rook captures knight f5 we go after the bishop now we're going to play bishop d6 and uh, you know it's a it's a it's a very nice position white will have have some pressure but nothing serious we can trade off the rooks captures captures so it's nothing really so uh, instead Alireza tries this bishop captures on f1 idea rook h captures on f1 and now pawn to a3 uh, the if you go for something like d captures um, on e4 and you try to trade the uh, trade off the queens then queen to g2 is deadly you do not want to play this so here Alireza plays the much much stronger pawn to a3 now queen to g2 isn't all that scary because if you play it now uh, we can capture here and now we're threatening b captures on c1 with check so you don't even if you play one check your knight f5 check you don't have checkmate the knight here is covering this square king h8 and you're perfectly fine after king captures on b2 it's gonna be it's gonna be black who's uh, gonna be r running the show here uh, with ideas like knight captures uh, here, rook to g8, and, and so on. Uh, rook to b8. Uh, so instead, after a3, uh, Nepo just closes the position. b3, we have king to h8 now, and e captures on d5. And now, uh, what do you play here? Well, there are a couple of good options here. Alireza could consider queen to c7. That's one of the moves that um, uh, makes sense here. Uh, although you constantly have to worry about this rook captures on f6 from Nepo. If he plays this, you're not going to be able to capture back with the knight because of this pawn push so that's very annoying uh, you're gonna have to capture with the bishop and then uh, well it's just knight to d3 and a very very nice position for white if knight to d6 now we're gonna play bishop to c5 and white is down the exchange but he has this pass pawn and uh, constant pressure with black and uh, really having not not all that much to do uh, but it's a very very active position and uh, you, you could definitely play it however Alireza went for knight to d6 right away and this is now much much different uh, here he is offering the b4 pawn now it looks scary capturing this pawn uh, but uh, nepo is already up one pawn so grabbing another one could mean uh, no ra rather sorry uh, he, uh, the the material is equal here and if he grabs this pawn and if he can grab it without ruining his pawn structure that means he can also play c4 at some point then he's going to have this massive pawn chain here and it's not going to be easy for alireza to play this but if alireza gets the attack uh, then it could be very very wrong for uh, for Jan. And now the problem is you don't uh, actually have a lot to think about here. If you don't capture right away, let's say you play knight d3, 
and uh, you allow Alireza one move, knight d to e4, uh, comes with a tempo on the queen, uh, that's pretty much it, black is winning here, captures, captures, again, you can't capture the b4 pawn now, knight to c3 check is coming, and it's gonna be all black from here, let's say queen c1, knight to c3 check, and now it's black um, uh, who will win this game. Uh, however, after knight to d6, Nepo spent, uh, I don't know uh, exactly how much, but you know, maybe, maybe a few minutes, and he grabbed the pawn right away, queen captures on b4, and now even though you have some discovery, here none of them are particularly useful and uh, th this position is much much better for white however you could still pose some problems here as black uh, if, if you play something like knight to d7 but uh, understanding why knight to d7 uh, must be played uh, is is uh, a, a very different story from what uh, actually happened in the game because if you don't know uh, a, a certain trick Nepo has at his disposal you will not find knight to d7 but here just to give you an example for example uh, c4 we said that the pawn chain will at some point come. Uh, black might get some counterplay with f5, but still after c5, I mean, uh, you can see that uh, even though it's a very, very uh, ambitious play from black, white will be uh, much better here. For example, rook b8 attacks the queen, queen back to e1. We can even play knight to b5. Looks uh, like something is happening, but still knight captures on f5. Uh, we can play bishop captures on c5, bishop captures, knight captures, and now queen to g3. We threaten checkmate, black might defend this, we're gonna capture on e5 with check, and now again white will be uh, either uh, either winning on the spot, or maybe if black has some sort of a miracle move, maybe you survive this, but very likely white is just winning this. Uh, so uh, even with the absolute best defense, uh, it's still possible for white to just forcefully win this. However, after Alireza's move rook to c8, uh, which seems like a perfectly plausible move, uh, it, it's uh, it's really not, because if you find the one move that Nepo played, uh, then you are truly the greatest chess player ever, uh, maybe except for Magnus, but okay, maybe, uh, you know, uh, up there, uh, and it took Nepo exactly four minutes to spot it, so you have four minutes, uh, try to find the, the best move for white, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you four minutes, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds, but you guys can pause the video and have four minutes all to yourselves. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the move, but uh, it is uh, White's next move that is uh, essential, not the first one in order for you to really real, uh, you know, understand the move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop to B6. This is what Jan played after some four minutes, and now uh, there, uh, there is no good move for Alireza. Even Judith Polgar, uh, who was uh, commentating on the game live, said that this move is far from obvious because leaving such a wonderful diagonal, you know, for this diagonal, uh, even with this tempo on the queen, if, if it's not winning by force, it's it's probably not a good move. However, uh, Jan spots that it is winning by force, and the problem is next. How do you block this? You can't block with a piece, so you are, you're not going to play rook to c7. So if you play queen to e8, that loses e immediately. You pretty much see that. Rook captures an f6, we have to capture back, and we pick up the knight. So two knights for a rook, of course, we are winning this. So the real question is, what did Jan see after queen to d7? Well, uh, Jan saw this, queen back to e1. And that's a move you definitely uh, <laughs> uh, can't spot easily. Bishop to b6, you know, just uh, freeing up this uh, path to the e5 pawn. This is what Nepo played. And now the reality is, now Nepo is already up by one pawn and now he's threatening to pick up the uh, the other one. And there's no good way to stop this. If you play, if you play something like pawn to e4, then you allow this uh, diagonal to be grabbed by one white and there is no defending this. How are you stopping uh, all of the captures on f6? If you play something like knight to e8, we can simply play knight captures on e4. Now we're just completely piling up on that knight and there's no uh, there, there, there's no saving this, this is completely winning. So another thing you might do after queen to e1 is knight to g4, you might try to defend the pawn this way, but then we play h3, we kick away the knight, okay knight h2 attacks the rook, rook f2, now there is nothing. If bishop h4 looks scary, but again we gladly pick up the knight and now it's just a free piece. So. Uh, although it looks like there's something there really isn't. Uh, so here Alireza went for the only move that uh, he could um, because it's such a such a terrible position to play. Uh, he played rook to b8 and now uh, the position isn't his only problem. Uh, his real problem, well, 
the position is a real problem, but he doesn't have time to realize that as he is down to three minutes on the clock and it's only move 26. So you need to make 14 more moves to reach time control, uh, whereas Nepo has over an hour on the clock. And now, okay, the, the bishop is attacked and the idea is uh, he wants to play knight to c4. The knight will not be uh, in any trouble because the, the b pawn is pinned and the knight from c4 will be guarding the, e, uh, the e5 pawn. So that's kind of the basic idea. And uh, Nepo can just retreat the bishop wherever. He plays bishop to a5. Okay, knight to c4 by Alireza. He played it pretty much instantly as he's very low on time. And now Nepo again has to figure out how to play this. Pretty much any move is winning for Nepo. And when I say pretty much every move, I really really mean that so just to give you an example rook captures on f6 is winning uh, point is that if you capture then we just play queen to f1 now we're attacking the bishop and the knight so that's winning uh, you don't have to capture the rook you could of course um, uh, instead of bishop captures on f6 you could capture the bishop here but we're just going to play queen captures on e5 and now good luck surviving this we're threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries and of course if you capture we're just going to capture back king here rook to g1 knight will come with all sorts of nasty discoveries uh, there is no surviving this and uh, uh okay you don't even have to play rook captures on f6 you could even just bring the bishop to this diagonal uh still completely winning how are you how are you playing this uh, uh, let's say knight to g8 we're gonna play bishop captures on e5 even at the price of that bishop knight captures queen captures and now for example after f6 queen f5 we are up too much material of course this is completely winning for white uh, but nepo chooses the coolest way as he usually does and he plays pawn to d6 just advances that pawn attacks the bishop here so Alireza plays bishop to d8, offers a trade of bishops. Now Alireza is down to one minute on the clock. Nepo still over an hour on the clock. And the bishop back to c3. Now the bishop claims this diagonal and you will not... Um... Uh, be able to survive this. It, it's a winning position for Nepo plus less than a minute on the clock for Alireza. Uh, queen to e6, yes, you are now successfully guarding your pawn, but it doesn't matter. Just knight to d3. We again pile up on the pawn. Uh, also possible is king a1. I'm just going to show it uh, just to show you how, how uh, awesome the position is. Um, uh, so, <laughs> uh, what uh, what can you do here? If, if you play knight to b2, because now by moving the king, we are threatening b captures on c4. That was impossible with the king and b1 let's say uh, knight goes here we can capture captures captures and captures and again there's not much you can do here white has four passed pawns and even though uh, it does seem like black could create some attacking chances there really aren't any so but okay nepo chooses the, the the simpler one he goes for knight to d3 again just piles up on the e5 pawn knight to d5 now putting pressure on the bishop here and now we have knight to f4 again uh nepo i, I played this uh, incredibly quickly because he also wants uh, Alireza to uh, have to play quickly. He doesn't want to allow Alireza to think on Nepo's time. Uh, but again, if, if you guys are interested, uh, there are a couple of ways to blunder this game for uh, Jan, actually. For example, if knight f5, uh, there's the scary knight captures and c3 check, which is what Alireza found. The bishop captures and the uh, uh, queen captures and bishop a5 uh, is uh, super scary. Uh, so it almost traps the queen, uh, but not really. You have to play this b4 move uh, and then you, you will squander your your winning chances now knight captures on d6 will come and uh, you will no longer be winning this game with white so it is possible to ruin it however Jan plays knight to f4 and now we have knight captures on f4 rook captures and pawn to f6 so Alireza saves the e5 pawn but now queen to e2 now preparing queen to h5 also the pawn cannot capture the rook because the queen would hang also um, well there's still a lot of pressure on this knight so the, the queen can't really move so so knight to b2, now Alireza is down to 30 seconds, and now we have a rook, uh, a rook uh, d to f1. Uh, rook to e8, so uh, you can start maybe moving the f pawn, uh, and now of course you are threatening pawn captures on f4 as the rook is guarding the queen, but now rook to h4, and uh, now there really isn't any anything for Alireza. I know I, I keep repeating this every move, but it's just such a beautiful position where so many moves are winning for Nepo, it's hard to choose a, a great one. Here Alireza played f5, uh, almost uh, down on time completely, opening up an attack against the rook, and here when Nepo 
saw this, he was very happy because he knew that he was going to sacrifice this rook on h7. Of course, uh, the, you, you cannot resist such a such a thing. Even though you can play pretty much anything, you can like play a rook, rook to h5, just move the rook. You can play knight captures on f5. Everything is winning here. You could capture on b2 probably, uh, but he goes for it. A rook captures on h7, and now you are getting checkmated, and the, that's it. King captures. Queen to h5 with check, king to g8, if you block with queen h6, then we just pick up the rook here, so that's not helping. So king to g8, and here knight captures on f5, opening up the g file for the rook, uh, bishop to f6 by Alireza, uh, but now rook to g1, and it was in this position, on move 39, one move before reaching time control, that Alireza Firuja resigned the game, and Jan gets another spectacular victory in round 4 of the FIDE candidates tournament, so now he defeated the Ding in in round 1, and he takes down Alireza in round 4, uh, which is simply incredible. Uh, he got surprised a little bit uh, out of the opening, but uh, he just blitzed out all of the moves uh, against Alireza's preparation, and then it's, you know, the, uh, over the course of like 4 moves, Alireza had to spend all of his time on the clock and the, 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 there was nothing uh, uh, he can do there. So here you resign because uh, you can't block this check, whatever you block with bishop g7 or bishop g5, we just capture it. And if you play king f8, uh, then it's a forced mate in 4, just queen h6 check, king to f7 and now rook to g7 check, that's it. If you capture queen captures and g7 is checkmate, and if you move then queen h8 check, queen has to block, and now of course queen captures and g8 will be checkmate. So truly a spectacular game, 39 moves, but uh, again, feel, feel uh, definitely feels like a miniature, and it's uh, it, it's incredible how how I mean how exciting Chess Nepo is playing in the candidates tournament. But it seems to be uh, a recipe that that is working, as he also won the previous candidates tournament. So now you know leading the tournament like this uh, is definitely. Uh, you know, the other players will have to step it up a notch to, to, to catch up to him, but we'll see if he will be able to create so many chances in, in the other games that are to come, uh, or will his, uh, you know, creative play... Uh uh, strike back against them. We'll see. We, you never know when when Nepo is playing. He's like the he's like the mo modern uh, Vasily Vanchuk. Uh, you know, uh, incredibly talented. Incre you know, uh, absolute genius. Uh, except when you know something just happens on the board. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, really, really a wonderful one. We're not gonna uh, spoil what happened in the other games as as I'm going to cover that as well. And then we're gonna discuss the standings a little bit. But yeah, uh, just countering. Uh, uh, Alireza's uh, preparation with, uh, you know, uh, either preparation or very, very uh, uh, qui a quick uh, over-the-board uh, calculation, but whatever it was, it was it, it was incredible. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Auguria Morino, Feliz uh, Kumple, uh, Dani, uh, Jeffrey Tanato, Matan uh, Merom, uh, Francis Ayer, and Casey Vance for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, until it finishes. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.